All right, so I haven't been in this facility probably in a couple of months, actually. Then we're at Bellarmine. I'm here with assistant coach Steve Hartman. What's up? We are putting, well, he is putting together um, a coaching module for our clients on overall spinal health and core abdominal health. And uh, we're covering things like anti-extension, anti-rotation, and anti-flexion. And what we're gonna be doing is giving these modules to our clients within our client YouTube channel. Um, so you guys are gonna get to see kind of a little bit of it, but most of the content will be reserved for our clients. Um, but I figured I would go ahead and showcase a little bit of what we're doing. I'm also very, 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 very fortunate that during this time I'm able to come here and train it is a closed down gym um, so it is closed to the public and they have closed down Bellarmine as a school so I am fortunate to be able to trade here today as well possibly tomorrow for a leg day we're just kind of kind of take it day to day here in Louisville Kentucky um, so far our city has not been drastically affected but I think as of today later on today maybe by the time you see this video edited things will also look different I think we're all just kind of waiting in apprehension and nerves and the buildup of what what the next coming weeks are going to look like so we're just trying to do as best as we can today's monday is it today monday yeah today's today is monday, monday. today day. today is monday all day and um as a coach i'm having to be a lot more agile plan for how my clients are going to be training be physical and i'm just really encouraging them to First off, don't panic. Um, also understand that I can't. That I can only write so many programs on the fly, um, based on the equipment that each one of them have available to them. Um, but I'm just encouraging movement. Obviously, we can still walk outside. We can still be mobile within our home. We can still do things physically. Um, our physical beings haven't been taken from us, luckily, unless we have been obviously affected by the virus. So just being mobile is better than just sitting home and doing nothing. Um, so I'm just trying to encourage that in the first coming days while I prepare and write programs based on what clients have available to them and what they can and cannot do and um, what they where they can go a lot of people have minimal gym equipment at apartments um, some people have minimal home equipment so we're just trying to be as agile as possible so anyways hope you guys enjoy the rest of this little mini vlog little education we're going to give you guys over what we're doing and covering and we'll see you guys through the vlog do you are, are you wanting to coach plank from this position like more of like a yoga plank or no, elbows down elbows down yeah, Ooh, elbows okay down. Yeah. all right so definitely not my strongest plank option. this i mean this looks scoop forward just a touch right there looks good okay okay cool and you talk i mean you do your thing oh right? okay we're just going to test my ability to plank is what we're going to do yeah here to not allow her hips show me a bad rep chanel real quick she's not allowing her hips to dip and she's not allowing her hips to pike up she's in a straight neutral position. What we can do is create an additional movement in the anti-extension position to add an anti-rotation uh, component to it. So what she'll go into next will be the plank reach. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is you'll see the hips shift slightly side to side. So what I'll ask Chanel to do just to create some more stability is bring her feet out wider to create a wider base. Now when she reaches out there's a little bit less shifting from side to side. So now we've got the anti-extension component. There you go. <laughs> How many reps Perfect. was that? That was that a lot was of reps. Great. Lots of reps. That was good. All right. You can put your elbow on the floor. Oh, really? Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> I hate this one. You got it. Okay. So again here, now, again, very simple static position. Show me a bad rep, Chanel. Let the hips dip. This is not what we want. Also come up very, very high. That's not what we want. We want a nice neutral spine. So she's gonna find that neutral position. She's gonna squeeze her glutes, drives her, driving her hips forward so we're not piking the hips back. And she's bracing that left. Do you wanna do a practice rep? Sure. Just go to what you can and then come back. That's perfect. It's money. 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 We should have done that I'm pretty one. good. I'm, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> So do you want me to like slow this down so you can teach each each extension? I'll, uh, I'll talk real quick and okay. get you to start cool. on the key. Right. So again, this is just a moving plank. We're lengthening the lever here as she rolls out. She's bracing, 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 uses her core to pull herself back, shortening the lever here and finishing the rep. Great job. Yeah. 
So, elbow down. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go elbow and then, down. And okay. then put yourself in as much of a straight line as you can. So you're angled here. Bring your, bring your elbow back here. There, that far? Yep, yep. there you go. Well, okay, well you're gonna have to hold it for me then. Gotcha. Okay. Got it? Cool, there yeah. There you go. Good, now try it. There you go. Is that enough weight? Yeah. Perfect. So now, moving into the lateral flexion progression, we want to add that rotational component to it. So you're taking the regular side plank that we just did in the lateral flexion movement. We're adding a load into a side plank row. Now this arm is wanting to get pulled out of position, which Chanel is having to fight that by using that rotary capability to resist against that rotation component that's being added from the load here in addition to the regular side plank position that has that anti-lateral flexion action going on. So as you can see, she's reaching out, driving the elbow down and back, bracing, keeping her hips in line with her shoulders, not letting the hips pike back or <laughs> side down. <laughs> there you go. I tried to keep going while you were still talking and I was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Nice. Reaching out here. Can I put, do I have my on my elbows again? No, high plank. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got this. Okay, so next progression involving the anti-extension and rotation component. We're in the high plank position instead of the elbows down. And what Chanel's gonna think about again is bracing everything, keeping it nice and neutral. She's gonna take her right hand and just reach out and think like there's a 12 o'clock right in front of her, comes back, then a one o'clock, and a two o'clock, and a three o'clock. I'm doing this all around. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I have think, no clock in my mind. Just stick with one side. Just do your right hand. Oh, here. just do your right yeah, hand. Just okay. do your right hand. All right. Okay, we'll start from the top. Okay. All right, so we just wrapped up our filming series for the video. Hope you guys like some of those bloopers, some of those behind the scenes for that. I am here in the Bellarmine strength and conditioning room that I am very fortunate to have access to, but I, it is an anterior day, so my anterior includes my anterior delts, medial delts, chest, and biceps, so I'm gonna be doing a dumbbell exclusive workout. There are no machines in this facility. It is only racks, benches, there is this cable tower back here, but I'm going to avoid using the cable tower, so this will be a dumbbell exclusive workout for you guys. Um, just for those people who might have dumbbells at their home, looking for a quick routine, I thought that this would be a good one for you guys. It's an easy day. Um, I find that at-home programming is most difficult for a posterior chain, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully this anterior workout will be beneficial for you guys, so hope you guys enjoy it. I'm also gonna do some voiceovers with some intensifier options that you can add, um, and I'll showcase some of those as well. So if you're looking to intensify the current loads that you do have because you can't progress in terms of the loads that you have maybe you only purchased 20 pound dumbbells and you're actually looking to get some progression out of that we can do some alternating movements um, some increased rep ranges we can do some drop setting to really kind of showcase how you can utilize what you have as I said in lieu of recent events I wanted to provide you guys with a dumbbell only workout um, in the coming weeks you'll see me provide a little bit more content on my channel including workouts that can be done from home you guys can check out my Instagram for my live workouts from my garage. But until then, let's get into some strategies that we can definitely use to make dumbbells of lesser load be far more impactful in our training at this time. So one of my favorites is combining alternating reps with iso holds. This increases your time under tension. So this entire set has not been cut or edited, so you guys could see that this is actually a 40 second set, whereas if I was doing these dumbbells and I was just doing them traditional, it would be an actual probably 20 to 25 second set. So we have indeed increased the time at which the muscle is exposed to tension. So I wanted to show you a couple of variations here with the different style of benches, because I know everybody has different style of benches. This is a flat bench dumbbell fly variation, so this alternating option can be executed in a fly variation. 
Both of these variations, the fly and the press, can be executed from the floor if you do not have access to a bench at this time. I will say that when you are executing from the floor, that removes the lower half from being able to brace the weight. So that does create a higher impact with a lesser load, meaning your arms are having to stabilize the weight exclusively and your core is without the availability of your lower half to brace. Another one of my favorite anterior movements that does utilize an alternating movement is the alternating dumbbell front raise. The advantage of alternating movements is you do have slight recovery between reps as the other arm is resting. So you're able to extend your reps to a higher volume. So if you do have lesser loads, this will allow you to extend to a higher volume, say a rep scheme of 12, 15, possibly even 20. I also notice an advantage on the alter alternating dumbbell front raise is that I'm able to calm my midline of my body, meaning if I'm utilizing a barbell or I'm trying to lift both at the same time, I find that I have to stabilize my core far more and prevent that sway back and forth. When I'm alternating, I'm able to activate my core slightly better, control my body forward and backward. One of the other strategies for making a smaller set of dumbbells work to your advantage is combining multiple planes of motion in one set. So what you're gonna see here is me utilizing a shoulder press, both a traditional shoulder press and then moving into an anterior shoulder press. So again, changing that plane of motion within essentially one set. So I'm gathering multiple planes of motion at that joint. Another facet to this movement that's making it far more challenging is the fact that I'm also adding an isometrical lateral hold with that opposing arm. It's counteracting my weight slightly, helping improve a little bit of balance and execution, but ultimately still it's an isometrical hold in that medial delt. All right guys, one of the last strategies for making a smaller set of dumbbells work to your best advantage at this time and create more time under tension and create more stress on the tissue, we can combine multiple grips in one set. So for example, I'm demonstrating this with bicep curls. I am utilizing a traditional bicep curl alternating with a hammer grip curl. So this is two different grips. This is a supinated grip in the traditional bicep curl and then a neutral grip demonstrated in the hammer curl. One last disclaimer I wanna to give to everybody is if you have not been adding plyometrics or any sort of jump training in your current training routine, please do not resort to entirely programming that into your new routine. Allow your joints to catch up to that style of training. Notice here I'm just doing an upper body movement, functional movement, and I'm not incorporating in this first week of training at home an entire workout of jumping. <laughs> Let's make the most of these quarantine workouts, but be ready to get back into the gym injury free. All right, guys, I am actually pretty spent. I trained for in a total of 56 minutes, so right at my one hour workout, which I've been trying to do anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed that dumbbell workout. I'm probably gonna close off this video right here because I have so much programming to write for my clients and I'm trying to do individual programming, not just give them like a run of the mill at home program. I'm trying to cater to what they have available to them. So I am doing these individual for my clients. Personalization is key in this matter because obviously I want to push them in the most physical capacity I can with what they have available to them. So I want to make sure that they are doing that and they have that available to them. So I'm going to close up this vlog here or here because I have no idea what happened to the end of that clip. Uh, I also have no idea what happened to the past 72 hours of my life. The beginning part of this vlog was actually filmed on Monday where it was just starting to trickle in that a lot of my clients were experiencing gym closures or because of the loved ones in their family, they didn't want to expose themselves to the gym even though there was no mandates at the time. So initially at the very beginning of the morning, things were not super chaotic and then it became a dumpster fire. Literally by the end of my workout, my email had exploded and I felt like I definitely needed needed to step away from my current vlog that was going on and essentially just stand up and be present for my clients who needed me most at that time. I wanted to be able to create custom programming to them to what was available to them um, just so they could continue to progress. I also was very much so having to take care of myself at that time. I had to do what it was that I needed to do for my family so we could be safe and sound in the quarantine as well. And I also had to 
take care of my own programming too. I will say this whole experience, while it was a crazy 72 hours, it was a huge learning experience for me as a coach and it allowed me to definitely put on my thinking cap and definitely get my training brain back in order for in ways in which I could be creative for my clients to be able to progress along with myself to progress while I'm in prep. Because if they ever do open up these floodgates, there's gonna be a lot of competitors who are ready to step on stage and I hope to be one of them. Hope you guys are staying safe and sound in this quarantine. If there's any suggestions or comments that you have regarding the video or regarding any of your at-home gym equipment setups, I wanna continue to create great content for you guys. I'm also continuing to put my live workouts right from my home garage gym on my Instagram account so you guys can join in on those. My next one's going to be this coming Monday. Hopefully this vlog is out on Sunday for you guys to watch it. I will be hosting all of my live workouts from my garage gym on my Instagram account so be sure to tune into there. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a quarantine workout from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.